Hey there viewers, Eric O here, Self Main Auto. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, welcome to our channel. Got a new repair video for us today. Got this 2005 Pontiac Aztec front wheel drive here. Came in for a state inspection and it failed. It needs a new brake hose. Uh, what's happened is the brake hose in the rear of the vehicle, where it's crimped together, has rotted out started to seep and I'm afraid the brake hose is going to blow apart on the lady uh, besides being a safety issue like I say it does fail inspection so she wants to fix obviously and uh, I'm going to show you how we do that I've had a little bit of a request of videos on how to make a brake line and uh, I've had people ask me if I've ever made a brake line which I almost kind of laughed at when I first heard because we're in New York I've done lots of brake lines hundreds of them thousands of them probably tens of thousands of them um, Brake lines are just a common occurrence. I do brake lines like most people do oil changes. So I'm gonna bring you along, I'm gonna show you how we do that, because I assume if we're gonna put this hose in, we're probably gonna need a brake line. So stick around. There's the culprit. This is the driver's rear. And you can see the uh, I don't know if you can see in the video or not, but um, this is almost non-existent on this side, the metal crimp portion. You know, this this one here is pretty bad. This one's MIA. If I get in there and pump it up, you'll see it'll get just damp around there. Not really squirting out yet, but just damp. This is what the new one looks like. So if you want to compare it, that little glimmer on there for you. So glad we saw it. Brake hoses aren't a super common failure. We're used to checking them for, for cracks, which you just don't see much anymore with the modern day vehicles you know we get some old you know carbureted cars something you know some older vehicle and you'll see them they'll crack for whatever, i see a lot of volkswagens too that don't have this ribbed hose that have like a smooth hose they tend to crack I, and i don't know what the difference is i'm not a rubber hose expert but uh this is one of the problems we have in new york you got corrosion um it looks like the line ahead of it is in pretty good shape i'm not worried about this one this one on this side it's not going to survive. I'll tell you that right now. I'm not even going to try. I'm just going to cut it. Uh, so what you will do is we'll make, we'll put the hose on. We'll get this unhooked. We'll make this line from here to the wheel cylinder. I'll show you that process. Uh, in case you've never seen it, we'll flare it. Um, I assume, let me look here. It's a double flare on this side. Probably a double flare going into the wheel cylinder. So I'll show you how that's done. Well, first things first, we got to try to get these locks off there. I'm just going to go at it with a pick. See if we can't just uh, get under there and start moving them around a little. Right, so it looks like this one wants to go. These things can really be jammed on there pretty good and sometimes get destroyed trying to take them off. All right, so I got that one moving anyways. Okay, so I got that off. That's what those clips look like on this. Kind of a little devil whammy. This one's had brake fluid leaking all over it, so I don't know if it's gonna be as forgiving. All right. Well, it started moving, that's a plus. There, two for two. I don't know how you unhook brake lines where you live, but that's how I unhook them here. Let's see if we can't. Uh... All right, we got that cracked loose from the hose. It's still stuck on the line, not real concerned about it. I'm not gonna sit here and twist it off. We're just gonna get this half of the hose out and then we're gonna twist the hose off from the line. That undone. Just kind of whack on them a little bit, get them broke free, which we've done. Like I say, we're going to untwist this hose from the line. 
And there you have it. Get it warmed up. Stick your wrench back on it here, hopefully. I'll get hot, blazing hot fluid dripped on you. Now you've got the nut free from the line. Gotta keep working that. There, that'll make reassembly a thousand times easier. Give it a little spritz of your favorite juice. Yeah, that's just a little tight for you. Get there, we can work it back and forth. We'll push it back, make sure the line underneath that fitting looks good. In which case, you can see here that it does. So, really, no need to cut that line. Just had to uh, take it apart a little differently. We'll just work it back and forth here to get that little layer of rust off. We'll spray it off before we put it on. We'll be in good shape. So I'm going to take and stick the new brake hose in. I don't know if you guys mess with them much. So if you look on the end of the brake hose, I don't know if you can really see it. But it's kind of, kind of hex like it has flat spots for a wrench. And then you move around the other side, it's kind of half moon shaped. The hole that it goes in also, uh, you know, corresponds, you know, both sides. Keeps the hose from going in there and getting twisted up. I'm just going to take it. You just kind of got to spin it around until it fits. Make sure it goes in there all the way. Then we're going to put the hose lock on it, and then we'll put our brake line back on. Got the lock on. Get our brake line back on there. And what that's going to do, that'll aid us in uh, basically installing the line because it's going to hold the hose for us. There's that. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. You might have to twist it and rotate a little bit to get to get it lined up exactly. Okay, so once you get that lined up, you can see we've got a good flex in it now. It's not all uh, twisted around there. We'll put our lock on. We'll make our new uh, brake line there. Put a pair of hose pinch pliers on there. It's probably gonna be a lot of people on YouTube going bananas saying, never pinch your brake hose. It's probably true. I've pinched lots of them, hundreds of them, and I've never had a uh, negative repercussion from it. So I'm gonna pinch it. I'm not gonna get ridiculous with it and snap a pair of vice grips on it or anything, but just simply squeeze the hose together slightly to keep it from dripping. Unhook the brake line from the wheel cylinder. There's a little clip holding this line in. Yeah, I'll get it with fish that baby right out of there. Take it out right in one piece. I got my 14 wrench I had on the line nut. Let's see if we can't get it over this one. Get that one cracked loose. All right, that's cracked loose. I'm gonna work on getting this out of here so we can uh, see what size thread this is. And we'll get uh, some new components around. Get this fixed up. Before we get too excited, trying to see if this bleeder is gonna come loose. like it's gonna. You never know. You know, if the bleeder didn't come loose, we just put a wheel cylinder in it or something. I see they're aluminum. All right, bleeder's out. So now we can just kind of 
thread that back in there. Wonderful. So basically we'll just come over here to the bench. That's a super simple one. So we've got the line. We've got a good copy. We've got the fitting. This fitting is the same on the wheel cylinder as it is in the brake hose. So I'll see if I have it. I'm sure I do. I keep a lot of fittings right in stock. So it's this little red one here. It doesn't necessarily have to be this long one. I mean, I, I suppose we could grind that off and, and knock the center out and drill it out, but I think the long reach on it is only for convenience. It only uses, you know, that much thread. So a regular brake line nut will work fine. Uh, I buy my brake line here on 100 foot rolls. And this is a, what they call a NICOP brake line. It's a nickel copper alloy. So using regular nickel line, or, or yeah, nickel, regular copper line in New York State is illegal. Compression fittings are illegal. Uh, copper line is illegal. But uh, we have this stuff here. Uh, SUR&R makes it. Um, a couple other companies have picked it up. If you live in the salt belt, you're probably pretty familiar with it. It works nice, it bends easy. Um, so we're just gonna cut off however much we need here. I just pretty much take the line, just kind of wiggle it along, see how much we're gonna need. Give yourself a little bit extra. You can buy this stuff in you know, 25 foot rolls too. It's a few bucks a foot. But like I said, I keep 100 foot rolls of 3 16 and quarter inch in stock. So we'll cut it off and, and we'll flare one side. So I'm gonna use just a standard double flaring set. So we're gonna put our brake line in the 3 16 side and you leave it sticking up a certain amount. I've done enough of them that you can just kind of eyeball it, but I'll show you. Let me tighten this down here. And the die. So you take our 3 16 die, and what you should do is when you put it in the tool, you have to leave your line protruding above the end. And what you do is you leave it protruding the height of that die, the height of that lower step of this die in this case, which you can see just eyeballing it. I've done so many of these that you just, you get to know what it looks like. So you put that on there like that. Um, you know, double check with your tool too. You know, your tool might be different. Uh, this one I've had, I've had this forever. This is, brand is Imperial. Um, I've had it for a really long time. Let me go get my deburring tool. And by deburring tool, I mean mini Phillips head screwdriver. So I just stick it in the end. It just kind of gets your little bite mark off there from using the cutter. Flares it open. I don't really flare it open. It just gets rid of that little edge, that burr. We're going to stick our die in there in the line. And we're going to use the uh, tool here. Open this up, clamp it over, and then we're just going to push the die in until it bottoms out. I did watch a relatively popular channel on YouTube. Uh, I won't mention any names, but they did a brake line on a car, and they're not from the Rust Belt, so they weren't very familiar with it, and they didn't do it correctly. So this is the first step of a double flare. You run your die on it, it's going to smush your line down like that. It puts somewhat of a bubble on it. It's not a true bubble flare. It just essentially folds the line over. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna run it in with the uh, tool here, and it's gonna take, essentially takes a line, folds it inside out or inverts it. I guess the technical name is an inverted flare. Uh, so we're gonna stick our tool back on there after we've ran the die in it. Got your tool lined up. Run it down, snug it up. And that's it, you've made an inverted flare. Now your flare has to look good. It has to be nice and straight and uniform. Um, you, if you do enough of them, you're gonna get a crappy one. You're gonna get one that's all cattywampus and cut sideways. And it all depends on how you cut it off. So I have a good quality cutter. I've got multiple ones. I've got short ones, long ones, ratcheting ones, all kinds. But when you're all done, you should have a nice, you know, a nice looking flare like that. Hopefully I see if I can get it to focus here for you. So it should be just nice and uniform. I don't know if that focused. You can usually tell when you put the nut on, you know, it'll sit, you know, nice and even, you know, all the way around, you know, real consistent around the edge of that nut. And the other thing you gotta look for too, particularly if you're not using this NICOP line, because I haven't seen this line do it yet. This, this line, this, this line flares beautifully. 
if you're using regular steel line or the uh, um, I don't know what they call it, the, the green poly coated line um, they tend to split you'll flare them and they, they can split so make sure your flare isn't cracked that'll make you mad because you'll get it on you won't notice it you'll tighten down you'll never get it stopped leaking so anyhow that's enough on flaring it's pretty easy if you live in the rust belt you've done it you've probably done it a lot so uh, what we'll do is uh, this stuff bends you can bend this with your thumbs you can bend it you know quite easily uh, so you can do as good a job or as you'd like I've got these pliers these will accept a 3 16 line don't ask me where I got them I can't remember but I got these in 3 16 and quarter I've got tons of different benders um, what I'll do is I'll just take the old line because we've got it here and we'll just uh, we'll just mimic what we have and uh, I'll use the pliers there to bend the, the bends that are I guess somewhat difficult if there is any otherwise we'll just use our thumbs and kind of go along and make this line up as best we can it doesn't have to be perfect it's as good as you want it to be But the closer you get it, if you're able to get the uh, lines out in one piece, the easier your job will be going back together because you'll be able to just take it over and, and snap it in essentially. So you just kind of mimic them like that. And of course it's, it's forgiving, you know. You can just hook it up on point A and point B and uh, tweak it a little bit if you need to. Bend that around like that. We'll hold it, we'll bend it up like that. We'll make our last bend like that. And then uh, we'll take our line, we'll measure it, we'll cut it, and we'll make our last flare. Like I say, we'll just take it and stick the old fitting on there. Like I say, they're a little forgiving. You don't have to have them 100% dead on. We'll compensate a little extra for the, for the flare. Once we get that marked, take and uh, cut this side off put our fitting on it and then flare it oh gosh hope this is turning out good <laughs> I've been getting interrupted here a whole bunch of times of course on the video it looks all fluid like I'm just sitting in one spot but got a zillion other things going on and like I say the only reason I'm I thought it was silly when somebody asked me about, you know, you're going to do brake line videos, you're going to do brake line video. I thought it was kind of ridiculous, like, who hasn't done a brake line? But I got thinking, my friend in Arizona, he's probably never done a brake line. So you stick it on, you make sure it's in the right height. As a matter of fact, you can probably crawl under his car, which has 200,000 miles on it, and unhook a brake line, which here, you just can't do. I mean... I mean, you've seen how I unhook brake lines. Either involves a torch or a good pair of cutters. So you run, uh, run the die in, take the die out, make sure your flare's sitting good and straight. If it is, just run the center one down in. That puts the correct angle on it, which I don't remember how many degrees it is, whether it's a 37 degrees, I think I would know, but I don't know what degree a inverted for it. But I do know, being that I said that, somebody's going to post what degree they are. Um, anyhow, that's it. If you make enough brake lines, one day you're going to make a beautiful flare and then you're going to look, you're going to see the nuts not there. That's going to make you upset because you've got to do it over again. So there's that line. There's the line we took off. You can see they're relatively the same as it lays here on the bench. Um, you know, if you add that piece on, they're, they're the exact same length. So that should get us really close. Uh, it would be my suggestion to start the side that's the hardest to get to first. So we'll put the wheel cylinder in. If we got to tweak it a little bit, we'll tweak it. We'll snap it in the holder that it was in, then we'll hook it up to the hose, bleed this thing out, and we're done. Come back under the van here. 
push our line back up and around. Oops. Get it going right way right here. I'm trying to do this and keep my head out of the way of the camera is tough sometimes. So we'll get that started. Start snugging it up a little bit. We don't want to tighten it down all the way yet because we, we still want to be able to, uh, you know, move move our line around where we're going to need it. But we'll start running it in, and you can see that there's really not a need for that extended extended nut, other other than the fact that you know it would be a little easier to get a wrench on. But GM uses those quite a bit on different things. Okay, just about ready to hit. I'm gonna click it back on in the uh, plastic uh, little little retainer that's on the other side of this uh, control arm here. All right, we got that to click in. We'll bring our line up and around and you can see that we got it pretty close. Like I say, the line's really forgiving. So we're just kind of tweaking around where we need it. We'll get it lined up with our brake hose. get it started into that which is pretty easy to do and then we'll tighten down this side this this will rotate our line a little bit when we go to tighten it down so we've got that side tight so now you want to make it look good you kind of tweak it around the biggest thing with line if you're gonna do a crappy job and just rip it from point A to point B, just make sure it's not rubbing on anything. You, you get a brake line that, that's touching something, a little bit of vibration, that's gonna be back in a week, it's gonna have a hole in it. Um, kind of, uh, I don't wanna say I pride myself, but I try to, I try to do the best job that I can uh, You know, for our customer. They're paying us you know, money to do this. We wanna do it so it looks as factory as possible. We run it right back through all the factory holders no matter what we're working on and uh, you know just do the best job that we can so um, you know and there's no reason not to it would take you just as long to do this job cobbed up as it would to do the best that you can so the brake hose side is tight I'll come back up here on the wheel cylinder we'll finish tightening this up oops underneath here And that should be snug enough. We'll look at our line. We've got good clearance up around here. It's clipped into the factory holder. Looks good and even there. Take the uh, rubber top here off our bleeder. Gonna unhook our clamp on our rubber hose there. Let it sit here in gravity bleed. Which, uh, if you do, take, take a few minutes. If it doesn't start gravity bleeding on its own, take the top off the brake reservoir so it allows some air in. And uh, we'll sit here and we'll wait for this to start dripping. We'll give it a couple pedal pumps and we're done. So you can see now after just a minute or so, it's, they start to gravity bleed pretty easy. So I'm just gonna close this off. And uh, we're gonna push down on the brakes and just be sure that we put, got all the air out. Usually gravity bleeding actually works works pretty well if you have nobody there and you just got to wait till the next day. I've, I've gravity bled stuff and got minimum air out of it. I right, go ahead and push down on the brakes. Now we're just going to bleed that out. We got one little blast of air there. Go ahead and let up. Push down. Fluid looks good and steady there, so I think we're good. You can go ahead and let up. Now I'm just gonna take some brake parts cleaner. Probably the first time in my video you've actually seen me clean brake parts with it. We'll just hose that off. We'll blast it off till it's dry. Stick the rubber cap back on and we're done.
So make sure you top off the brake fluid. And that's it. So you can see making a brake line is pretty easy. That Nikop brake line or nickel copper ferrous alloy that they have, uh, if they have it in your area, buy it. It's wonderful stuff. I've been using it for quite a few years. Um, they give it a lifetime warranty against corrosion. You know, I don't know how you would redeem your warranty on it, but at any rate, I have relined multiple, multiple vehicles, you know, front to back, every single line, you know, Chevy trucks and Dakotas and Sabres and you know, Hondas, everything, you know, all kinds of vehicles. And I've had this stuff out there for years and uh, so far so good. It, it does work well. It turns like, it gets like a little greenish hue to it. You know, must be the copper that's in it. It is magnetic. It does have an iron content to it. Uh, you know, I don't know a lot about metallurgy or it's, you know, ability to withstand pressure, but uh, it is legal in New York and evidently some uh, OE manufacturers are actually using it. Um, uh, I, I did have, we had a thing that come across our state inspection computer one time, you know, uh, New York State and all their wisdom was going to try to outlaw this, you know, nickel copper alloy uh, line because it had the word copper in it and, you know, some pencil pushing geek uh, wanted to get rid of it, but then all of a sudden discovered that some OE manufacturers use it and then it wasn't that big a deal all of a sudden. Politics, I don't get it. I don't try to get it. Um, anyhow, that's it. I hope you uh, like the video. I hope you understand a little bit more about making a brake line. I've been waiting to do a video on it because I wanted to do one that was pretty much a simple line. Uh, nobody wants to see me do a you know, six hour, seven hour brake line job on a Chevy pickup. I mean, you make one brake line, you've, you've made them all. Some are easy to run, some are a little more difficult. If we're doing a quarter inch line, it's, uh, it's the same method. You know, you put it in the die, line your die up, you make your flare, you invert it, and you're done. Don't forget the brake line nut. And I guess something else to mention is not all flares are double flares. Some flares are what we call bubble flares, and they're made out of metric line. And uh, maybe when I get one of those in, I'll show you that, because I'm sure probably a lot of you guys out of the Rust Belt haven't seen those. And it's a different tool, same process. It's just a one-step process. It puts a nice cone-shaped bubble on it. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Check us out on Facebook. You can connect with us on uh, Google Plus, too. Uh, so you can find us there if you want to connect with us socially. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.